Hello, my name is Keen McGrath and I'm a writer for Cork City FC. I'm here with the sports editor for the University Express, Jack McGuire, and we're here today to bring you a preview of what lies ahead for Cork City this season. We're here in the, the great Soho Bar and Restaurant here today in the middle of Cork City, which is well known to Cork City fans and staff alike, and we'd like to thank them for their youth the VIP facilities here today, a fantastic venue. I'm sure it's a venue well known to all Cork City fans, especially uh, in light of the 2017 League and Cup double winning season. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be looking ahead to what may lie in store for Cork City, and I suppose the best way to look at what may lie, may lie ahead is to kind of look back at what happened last season. For sure, yeah. Last season was, uh, <coughs> I suppose the best way of putting it is disappointing. Mm. Um, obviously, a lot of new signings came in last season, we're looking at Gary Boylan, Dan Smith, Liam uh, Nash, Matty Gillum, a lot of new signings, a lot of exciting signings. Matt, James Tilly, all players were no longer at the club. Um, you've also got Darrell O'Connor, obviously a huge fan favourite now, but expectations were definitely high. Um, before we talked today, I looked at a few of the previews from la this time last season, yeah. and nearly everyone had City down as second. A uh, few had third, a few good predictions of Rovers to come second, but I don't think anyone really predicted City would come eighth. Uh, definitely not, no. City, very lucky probably that there was two worse teams rather than they were better than anyone else in the league. Um, very distinct lack of goals. Um, John Caulfield, obviously an absolute legend at Cork City. Yeah, oh, hero. Uh, managing the club for so long. Uh, had obviously taken us to a League and Cup double, uh, three cup finals in a row. Absolute legend, but third last season, things didn't start off too well. Um, defeating the President's Cup 2 1 to Dundalk, followed by uh, was an away. It was, yeah, one, one nil away, lost to Pats. And then a defeat at home to Waterford, and yeah. it kind of set the tone for the season. It did, yeah. A slight recovery under Caulfield, and then Caulfield obviously left his job. In came his assistant, John Cotter. People were fairly. Um, intrigued and the sports still stayed. Yeah. Cotter didn't have the best of time going through to the main to the middle of the season. But um, where do you think it went wrong for City last season? I don't know. It's it's very hard to pinpoint the exact. Obviously, like Ian said, it didn't get off to a good start. It started off away last. I remember the penalty for Pats gave them one 0 win, and it kind of, as Keane said, returned to Cork. Then lost two 0 to Watford. That was crushing. That was it was heartbreaking to be honest. And we, we hoped there'd be a way back from there, but unfortunately, it didn't get any better. And you know, there was just so many strikers, there were so many different signings came in. We had a good solid team from the year before, but it just it just fell apart, you know, from years before when we had good strikers, mm -hmm. you know, there was strikers scoring 20 plus goals a season, and then we went to, uh, you know, literally no goals. Top, top, top goal scorer was Conor McCarthy last season, <coughs> I think exactly. it was six. Yeah. Um, an article I did a few months back, I think I was able to list out 10 players who played in that centre forward role. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And at the start of the season, we started the season with Graham Cummins, Matty Gillum, Dan Smith, Liam Nash, Carol Shepherd. you could argue, as a striker yeah. option. And then you've also got the young lads, Keen Murphy, Dara Crowley, Ben Ono, Brian Whitmarsh. <coughs> All these young lads and the older players and in a squad for the end, almost the entire season played one striker up front. And yeah. between them, there was only, <coughs> you could count on one handy amount of goals that would score. Uh, obviously a variety of those players leaving at different points of the season for different reasons but I think the biggest thing last season was a lack of direction, a lack of plan it seemed. Yeah, all out, out, yeah. There were some shining lights, I think Dar O'Connor of course at times shown and especially as we'll talk later when Neil Fenn came in he really came out of his shell and at the back I was a big fan of Dan Casey, big fan of Conor McCarthy obviously who was our player of the season last season. Um, Dan Casey obviously gone to Bohemians, um, Sean McLaughlin who's gone to St. Mary, or gone to Hull I was on loan at and been recalled. Um, and Shane Griffin, you're look and Colm Horgan, you're looking at five defenders who would have played regularly last season, all yeah. gone. Uh, you're also looking last season, starting the season with Mark McNulty in goals, a solid keeper. Moving on to Tiger Ryan, Tiger Ryan also gone, who would have been number one at the end of last season. Yeah, he would have been a great keeper. Yeah, we've we've it's it's almost like an entirely new team. It's hard to know where it'll go next season. But <clears throat> looking back on last. Like you said, it's very hard to pinpoint where it went wrong, but it's definitely easy to pinpoint where it wasn't going right. Yeah. I think the Waterford game, kind of like we did say earlier, set the tone for the season. Um, yeah. Caulfield tactics that day. I remember not. I wasn't alone in tearing my hair out at the fact that he seemed to the tactics seemed to be getting the ball down the wings, cutting in and crossing onto the head of Damien Laney and, and Kenny, Kenny Brown. Brown. The ball two, was just onto their heads. Two of the most experienced minutes. centre halves in the Premier in the Premier Division, and two lads <laughs> who will absolutely all day lap up. A chance to head a ball away. Um, yeah. Damien Laney, that's his bread and butter. If you've got Damien Laney and Kenny Brown, you'd think that you'd play trying to catch him out, but it seemed playing into their hands. And obviously, Watford got a good win that day, a fantastic goal from Sebastian Airy. And I think El Buzedi was El Buzedi broke. I remember Airy rounded three or four men, yeah, broke to the edge of the box, and just finished in front of the shed and everything. But whatever about Caulfield, Caulfield, when he left, I'm not actually sure exactly what league position they were in, but <clears throat> yeah. it wasn't the sort of crisis that came. 
John Cotter, his assistant, took over with um, Alan Bennett, Colin Healy and um, Liam Carney all acting as coaches on his team as well as others. But yeah. it seemed like a nice Cork City, comfortable team of people. But perhaps yeah. comfort was a problem as well in that I think when Neil Fenn came in, he said that it was time to move on, move on beyond that 2017 team. Yeah. I don't think anyone was perhaps as uh, quite prepared for what was going to come this season and how far away we've gone in from that 2017 team. But yeah. besides that... When Cotter came in, there was talk, obviously he'd been Caulfield's assistant, he'd worked at Caulfield for a long time, that he was a more attacking-minded coach, there might be something different for Coffee, for Cotter, sorry, but it didn't really come. Again, a lack of plan, the league games, they kind of all blur into one for me, to be honest. Yeah. But I suppose it's the most disappointing night was definitely the Europa League night. Um, that was gutting, yeah, I think that, 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 that was terrible, like, you know, it, it was... We're it's first to say we were drawing his progress neither corn uh, yeah in the first round uh, Luxembourg side that were there a decent side they'd beaten Rangers years before in another match I'm sure and yeah. we were drawn to play them at first in the cross before going to Luxembourg yeah and to be fair from that game when the draw was released it was known to fans and players that a win against progress would have seen us play Rangers mm-hmm. and that was obviously a massive tie it would have been massive for the club and massive for the community and everything and um, I think I personally, I think that played on the players' minds. And Certainly I think played on the fans' minds. I think people were taking progress for granted, one hundred percent. Definitely, yeah. They like they definitely overlooked them, and you know there might have been individual errors on the night in Turner's Cross, but it just went completely downhill. Well, going back to um, the progress Niederkorn night, you said individual yeah. errors. Um, yeah, Colm Horgan that night um, made a few mistakes, but I think yeah. overall you can't, it's very hard to blame him. He was taken off in the first half, and he was in the. Um, in the dugout, and you yeah. can see, I, I don't know if he had tears, but he was d- head in his hands. He was he, disgusted after that. He was like, absolutely you know. gutted, and uh, he didn't really seem the same since. Uh, obviously, he's a new signing for Derry, and I think an absolutely fantastic signing. Yeah, fantastic a really, really player. seasoned professional, especially as such a young man with such experience. I think he's only in his kind of mid to late 20s, yeah. and he's already pushing 10, le- 10 full seasons in the League yeah. of Ireland. He has plenty left to give, like, in Exactly, Paris, and I would have happily seen him at City as main right back, especially under Fenn. I think he's very good technically, but um, that night he made a mistake for the first goal, and I think he gave away the penalty, penalty as well. Yeah. Progress took an early 2 0 lead, but City just seemed to fall flat. Carl Shepard yeah. missed a penalty in that game, going straight down the middle. And someone that night said to me, mm. In a European match, you need to have more kind of cop on than to be trying to put a ball down the middle. But look, whatever it was, that team seemed a lot better drilled than City. Um, they could pass the ball, yeah. they could switch the ball, they, were, they had more ideas, where City ideas seemed to be. We'll see what happens when you get the ball, almost. Exactly, you know? yeah. There didn't seem to be any sort of uh, plan in place. It was literally just go for it and see see who's free. There was no system, like, no. look for the wings, play ball I in. I think that was when Cotter was trialling a trade at the back. Yeah. Because um, I, I can't remember, I think Ronan Harley played, but Colin Hargan certainly played, and the wing backs seemed almost confused as to whether they were meant to get forward or not, yeah. whether they were meant to slot in alongside the centre-halves in terms of an offside trap or push on. Hargan seemed very confused by the whole thing, and that's nothing against him. That would seem, I don't think that reflects poorly on him, but like you said, it was very disappointing and to go over there and take a 2-0 lead as well and then to concede a goal needing an only another goal and not even come close and knocked out of Europe so early yeah. huge disappointment and I think that night actually it wasn't it was Gary Buckley and Daryl O'Connor scored the goals over in Luxembourg I'm fairly sure and like you know even at that if they could have just settle down and play the ball nicely you know instead of there was no need to launch for it you know play it just play the game as they're doing stay calm but instead they just managed to fall apart and it, it kind of summed up City season as we said it was a personal low point it probably was a low point for the club and for all the fans but you know it was just it was terrible to see like with huge potential you know and obviously with our poor position in the league this year there's no Europe next year which obviously financially and just the buzz around the club it's it's taken a huge hit but you'd have to hope they will get back there in, in the next year or so you know hopefully Fenn will be able to change things around obviously he doesn't have a lot of money or he doesn't have a lot of uh you know, he's trying to find different talented players to, to bring him back to where he was. But uh, we'll have to see how it goes, really. You yeah, know. it's... it's Obviously, the, we're not going to go into the ins and outs of the financial situation because we yeah. don't know it. Yeah. We, we aren't in a position to Exa- talk about yeah. it. But it's fairly well documented that there's been a reduction in budget and Fenn is totally okay with that. Yeah. Um, from Well, obviously, he'd probably prefer more, but he seems at, yeah. at, he's uh, accepted at peace with like, accepted as yeah. part of his job. But, um, yeah, like the, at that time, I remember um, the Rangers game... A time of the potential Rangers game, sorry, there was it was known that there was a bit of um, worries financially with the club and things like that, and that, that could have been a huge boost for the club. Um, Sean McLaughlin obviously left for what was rumored to be a fairly low fee. Yeah. Um, mid-season, which was very disappointing, and left us with 
a lacking in the centre defence really. We only Definitely. had our options were uh, McCarthy and Casey, and then we had Alan Bennett third choice, who's an excellent seasoned professional, probably one of the best players yeah. ever to play for Cork City. Oh, well, that was that one. But yeah. um, you need cover. We need we needed more than that, and it didn't come. Luckily, young lads were able to step up. Uh, Josh Honahan, namely in the centre defence, uh, was absolutely fantastic when he did a, when he did make appearances. Yeah. But I think the absolute low point of the season for us all was um, the Galway United. Um, away game in the, that was terrible, in the cup yeah. after knocking Cabin Tealy out on penalties yeah, in the Cabin before on penalties away, yeah. in what was I wasn't at the game but I heard we were very lucky to come through that one oh, that was um, that, yeah. a Galway United side that had no real right to beat a Premier Division side were not in particular good form Yeah, from by all accounts I think City had no shot in target in that game um, Neil Fenn was obviously in attendance I, I think John Cotter had informed the players he'd no longer be manager after that game Timing was called into question, but that was really the season over. It was. It, yeah, was, that our, was, it was our last avenue into Europe. From yeah, there. I think that that was like you say, Neil Fenn was in attendance. It was just before he was going to take over, and I think that was. I think he'd resigned from, from Longford by then. He, he had, yeah, and it was the case of you know that was almost the old City team coming to a close, if you like, yeah. because I feel like you know after that, Neil Fenn he was open. Alec Brown got a chance, and Alec Brown made a serious, a serious job. Whenever yeah. he made appearances, he was solid in centre mid. He was as good as any of the lads that were there. You know, he was cool, calm, able to play ball. You know, and like Ian said, Josh Hannahan was fantastic. Ben Owen was fantastic. Any time he played up front, even against Dundalk, obviously, which was probably our high point of the season. Yeah. You know, in a season full of disappointments, you have to take some some sort of a good thing out of it. And yeah. I think the home win against Dundalk, last home game of the season, was fantastic. And Ben Owen was fantastic in that game. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think when Neil Fenn came in, obviously, look, the results didn't. It wasn't, uh, he had no magic dust, he had, no, he had yeah. no magic solution, but when he came in, the results obviously changed, they were for the better, they got better, and um, yeah. he continued to, he started to instill his philosophy, which is kind of known as Fenny Ball, but <laughs> we didn't really see it for the first while. I think the first while we saw there was definitely a priority on getting results, and we started to get them. We got a draw against Harps, a well-fought win against UCD, and once we'd beaten UCD, we were safe. And for the last two games of the season, Fenn really just cast away a lot of the players who he didn't want. Yeah. Throughout the season, he played. He tried to play kind of a strongest team where he could. There were certain players who didn't get a look in, but there was other times uh, where Fenn decided, or sorry, towards the end of the season, it seemed that Fenn had decided, okay, these are the players I want to play. These are the players who I want to believe in. These are the players I want to back. Yeah. So I'm no longer going to play. Lads like Colm Horgan didn't seem to get so much of a look in, and he was more focused on the team for next season. Once um, relegation was no longer an option after the uh, three-two win against UCD, and like you said, that game against Dundalk, yeah, that was probably the best I'd seen City play in a long time. Because oh, definitely, while yeah. Dundalk were good value for a result in that game, they were league champions, um, and City played them well, and they yeah. didn't. It wasn't. A back to the wall performance. Yeah, exactly. Barring the last ten minutes, City played, got the ball on the ground. Like I said, Ben Owen, O'Brien with Marsh, the young striker, I think top scorer in the inter nineteen division this season or sorry, last season, um, came through to the first team and he played really well. He didn't score in his time in the first team, but yeah. absolutely rapid as a centre forward. His movement was fantastic and he yeah. dragged probably two of the best centre halves in the league out of position against Dundalk. Uh, and was able to play Daryl O'Connor through for a fantastic goal. That was a brilliant fan brilliant favorite, Daryl O'Connor, who really again under Fenn came into his own. I think that's the thing with Fenn is you can point at his. Let's say if we want got into statistics and said Fenn's only won this many games, you know that many games. Yeah, reality, he hasn't actually won that many games as city manager. But you're starting to see the grass, the green shoots, sorry, coming up. The young lads coming through, like you said, Alec Byrne coming in, yeah, and just great. you know he had the option of having a midfield of McCormick, Buckley, and Morrissey. They were all fit when he came in, yeah. but instead. He uh, decided to put the fate in a young lad, Alec Byrne, coming through the academy, yeah. who played really well. He and was very good. He played, uh, Jack and myself attended um, the friendly against UCC, and Alec Byrne played a part in that, and again, looked solid. And it's the very, for the first time in a long time, I think it's City are at a point where we don't know what's to come. Yeah. Under Caulfield, it was very safe. You knew what was going to happen. You even knew the style of play. That's not to say we knew the result because, you know, his style was effective, but you knew what was coming. Whereas with Fenn, it's like an unknown quantity. I think that yeah. that's definitely gauging a level of interest around the city. Yeah. And as long as the fans keep the faith, you think 
hopefully something will come. He's spoken of a three-year plan. I think you were looking at that. Yeah, I saw that there. I just remembered it because we were at his press conference uh, when he was announced as Cork City manager and he mentioned the three-year plan to get back to the heights that City were at. You know, and uh, like as Keane said there, once we'd secured safety in the top division, he was able to experiment more. You know, and it was it was important he had those few games experiment try out the players that he thought were going to mm -hmm. have a future at the club the players that were going to make a difference he had a few games to test it out and it just showed against Dundalk like the team were they're solid you know and it was it was kind of needed you know he wasn't afraid to tell the lads that weren't needed mm -hmm. to, to move on and it was he even it, said in a press conference that it was that the time had come for that 2017 yeah. winning team to finish to, that their time at the club had come to an end not exactly. all the players but that kind of ethos that memory it was time to move on and that was something that I don't even I as a City fan someone who you know I for up until kind of recently wouldn't have attended all the games just because of where I was a bit, uh, located geographically but you know it's it's something that I think all City fans felt needed to hear but something that we all yeah. didn't want to Definitely, yeah. and I suppose looking at the ins and outs like it's we all knew Fenn wanted to move on to a new generation at City. We all knew Fenn wanted to bring through a new set of talent. But I don't think anyone expected it to be quite this severe. Yeah, no, we've, definitely not. We've no. lost, if you go from last summer, where McLaughlin, since McLaughlin left, you've lost McLaughlin, uh, Ty Ryan in goals. McNulty is now goalkeeper and coach, but he will, he's been, he, I doubt he'll be first choice. Um, mm. But um, Colm Horgan has gone. John Kavanagh, who was involved, uh, I think he was out alone last season. In defence, like I said, McLaughlin, McCarthy, Casey, that's leaving you with, basing off last year's squad, Alan Bennett is your only centre half. Exactly, yeah. Um, left back, Shane Griffin has gone to Pat. Um, yeah. He was not exactly a fan favourite with City, let's say. Yeah, he wasn't. He was he... very hit or miss amongst fans, not performance-wise, but I always thought, especially under Fenn, I thought he would have a good season. I thought he'd be a good signing, but, or sorry, not a good signing, a good player, but obviously Fenn has thought differently. You've got young uh, former under 19 captain Ronan Hurley there to fill yeah. that left back. Um, Midfield-wise, again, Conor McCormack, um, former club captain, gone. Gary Buckley, uh, Corkman, gone up to, gone to Sligo. Yeah. Um, McCormack gone to Derry. You know, you're looking at, I could, I could keep going, you know, there's yeah. lads, if you were to go, the only surviving members of that 2017 team off the top of my head would be Benno. McNulty, um, Alan Bennett and yeah. Gerald Morrissey and while that 2017 side obviously sorry obviously the nature of the league is that players do move players move around yeah. perhaps not perhaps not that severe looking at the yeah. ins from Neil Fenn I suppose we'll do a bit more back and forth I'm hugely impressed by the signing to having goals Liam Boston I'm not too sure too many people are, are fully aware of him but definitely got pedigree yeah, um, came through Anderlecht and was at the Nat uh, involved at Nottingham Forest, and now coming to Cork City, should be very solid. He should be. Yeah, he has plenty of experience. You know, like Anderlecht is a massive club, and mm -hmm. you know to have experience there and Nottingham Forest. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not everyone gets in there. Like he oh. obviously has talent, and you know it was needed after, you know, Ty Ryan last year. He was given this opportunity late in the season, and he he made most of it. You know, yeah. as I said there, like you know obviously good performances caught the eyes of other club you know that's the beauty of it and it happened over the last few years like we can see there sadly or you know in the 2017 season and before that like you know Shawnee Maguire was there we lost Shawnee then we had sadly I think this year and I've said it to you and I've said to several people that we were lacking this year was just a man to score last goals. season you mean oh last yeah. season yeah. sorry yeah like a, a sp kind of like a focal point almost uh, yeah exactly because like you know Sadler was key to the attack mm -hmm. you know he, he, he orchestrated not. everything under Caulfield you know in that that kind of season that good run of form and I think after he left it just seemed it, it appeared to be a bit leaderless for a while yeah. on the field and you know there was just no outlet really yeah. to lead it and, to and, and if, maybe he felt that someone else in the squad would step up maybe yeah, exactly. Daryl O'Connor would come in and fill that role or James Tilly yeah. or Liam Nash other players but it didn't work out there was no one there but this season I mean I can't really see beyond we'll go through more new signings but there is definitely yeah. options there as a focal point whether Fenn yeah. operates with one I don't think he will but other signings that have come in you're looking at you've got two good defenders in uh, Charlie Fleming and Rob Slevin uh, one from Cove one from Waterford and both monster lads but reasonably local lads and you know but it's good to have lads coming in obviously they'll be hungry yeah um more options in my opinion needed at the back yeah without a doubt. you're looking at 
the defenders we currently have at the club, we're looking at Josh Hanahan, who's come through the academy, Alan Bennett, Slevin, Fleming, Hurley. Um, I don't think I'm missing anyone. That's five defenders coming yeah. four spots, you know. Yeah, it's not um, exactly there was, for choice. Too. There was five trialists on show against UCC. Uh, I'm not going to speculate as to who they were because there's rumours coming in from all sorts of places yeah. that they could be coming from Austrian third division clubs, and you know, yeah, so there's, yeah. we won't even try and guess who they might be. But you'd hope there's more to come. Fenn spoke to us after that UCC game and said in the coming weeks he's hoping that more players come in. Obviously today, two weeks today is the start of the season, so yeah. they'd want to start coming pretty quick. Sorry, not, it's three weeks today. Three weeks today. Three weeks today, yeah. apologies, but they'd want to start coming fairly quick. Yeah, um, yeah. moving in, then into the midfield, you've got Kean Coleman, former academy man again, part of a very successful academy team, mm -hmm. along with players like Jadosi Ogbene, Conor Ellis, um, amongst others. There's, there's many more in that side. Um, and a very successful team, and he didn't really get his chance to score. He went away yeah. to Pats, didn't he? Yeah, he Another, went to Pats. He's yeah, going back down. By all accounts, a very talented midfielder. Hopefully he can slot in along with Byrne and Morrissey. Um, moving forward again, you've got Corey Galvin in from Waterford and Dylan McGlade, former Bray Wanderers, wasn't it? And he came from Blythe Spartans. Yeah. There was rumours that he was homesick at Blythe. Yeah, and he, he wanted to return to... Return to Ireland. Yeah. And Galvin and McGlade both, and Daryl Connor as well, all came on to form kind of a tree behind a main striker against UCC and all looked very impressive. Yeah. Um, Corey Galvin especially scoring a fantastic yeah. half volley. Think, you know, he was, he was fantastic, you know, and even yeah. like as soon as he came on, you could see that kind of flair that City had been lacking, you know, mm -hmm. like we've been on about how, like I said, how they were lacking an outlet. Galvin could be, you know, he could be key to the attack, his speed and everything. As soon as he came on, mm -hmm. he was just, you know, playing one twos there and with yeah. O'Connor and with, uh, with McLeade and they were just moving, moving the ball well, you mm -hmm. know, and it's something we haven't seen in a while, yeah. you know, that aggressive attack where the speed and there's, you know, a proper bit of passing play and set up. And Just purpose even, you know, yeah, Daryl exactly, Connor yeah. at the start of last season, I'm a huge fan of Daryl Connor's, yeah, but at the start of last season he seemed, he fell out of favour under John Cotter, yeah. um, he was good under Caulfield but his time was slightly lacking and it seemed he needed a bit of direction, it feels like Fenn has given him that yeah. and get his, his biggest problem that I saw last season, he did just getting his head up, and he seems to be doing that now really, really well. Yeah. Scoring against UCD and against Dundalk in two wins that were really important to the City last season. Yes, yeah, he fantastic hadn't scored, goal. Fantastic, yeah, and really well taken, you know. Yeah. Uh, at the start of the season, both himself and Tilly were fairly notorious among City fans for fantastic skill, beating a man, beating a second man, either shooting wide, shooting tamely, or failing to shoot at all and getting yeah. tackled, you know. And we spoke about a focal point, but Almost next season, you hope maybe City's entire front line could be in a focal point because exactly, I think yeah. Daryl O'Connor at UCD would have operated often through the centre, whereas yeah. last season he was off entirely out wide. Well, he was always right, yeah. But if you could have, you could look at possibly having McGlade and Galvin both out wide with O'Connor as kind of a more attacking midfielder yeah. behind a striker. There's so many options. O'Connor yeah. could also go wide, and you could um, have one of Galvin or McGlade on the other side. I think definitely under Caulfield there was a very defined formation and structure. Under Fenn, yes, there's a style, but yeah. even against UCC, they seem to play multiple different formations. They played a 4-3-3 in the first half with a trialist out wide, uh, Ricardo Dindanga on one side and Dara Crowley up front. Second half, they switched, it appeared to be a kind of a 4-2-3-1 um, with two with Alec Byrne and another in midfield. Uh, like we said, O'Connor McLeod and Galvin behind a striker. Yeah. And just that kind of Actually, seeing City change tactics in a match <laughs> was yeah. was nice to see. Yeah. And while you see a one 0 winning against UCC isn't going to win you a, a Premier Division title, yeah. but it's they, certainly promising. Like. UCC didn't really threaten too far beyond um, what City allowed. You know, yeah. City kind of had them at arm's length for the entire game, and that's good to see. Yeah. They were imposing. They were dominant. And I saw a colleague of ours, uh, sorry, a former colleague of ours, speaking about um, uh, a preseason friendly and saying that the there was a clear Kenny influence. Now, I'm not going to claim Stephen Kenny's influence Neil Fenn, yeah, but yeah. there's definitely a rising influence to play good football in Ireland, and I'm yeah. glad to see City will be doing that too. I mean, that was, yeah. Um, and you know the way that you said there, like, uh, there was a bit of change of tactics during the game. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, any City fan will know over the last few years, there was kind of that system, you know, mm -hmm. and the system was fine when it worked. Mm -hmm. But even when it wasn't working, it was still the same system in place. And, you know, we were, we were just shaking our heads saying, yep. 
where like where, where does it go? You know, like if, the, if a system doesn't work, you say the first thing you do change something. Just yeah. change someone around and see where you can. But actually, against UTC, it just made a huge difference. Like to see a formation changing, mm-hmm. to see lads being changed around and tried in different places. Like it shows that Finn isn't afraid. Mm-hmm. You know, he's winning. Well, whatever has to be done to bring Cork he's back. He's not to a slave to his own tactics. Almost. Like, yeah, like exactly. Yeah. Caulfield. Caulfield last season experimented with three at the back or a five at the back, whatever you put it. And the way they seemed to play it was that it was just high ball and you had Dara yeah. Crowley a young lad who only did leave start last summer you know yeah, exactly, chasing yeah. ball that he had no right to get and getting it sometimes and really he, yeah, he did pushing to get it Yeah, and I think the game I'm talking about in particular was a game against the same <coughs> sorry a game against the same Pats where they were playing against 10 men and City just never looked like getting a second goal and if that you're playing crazy, against 10 men yeah. against St. Pats in the cross you're one up for the whole game and then you yeah. lose or sorry you draw with a last minute goal like you just got to score more goals. You got to finish yeah. them off, and I think that kind of bite will be back this season. You got yeah. players, lads <coughs> like Charlie Fleming, lads like Rob Slevin are coming in to prove themselves. McGlade, Keen Coleman, they got a point to prove. They do, and like that. That's Last season, there was lads who didn't have anything to prove because they won a league title. Yeah. And not to say that they weren't hungry, because that's not fair either. But it was a different kind of motivation needed, and perhaps that motivation wasn't coming anymore. Perhaps it was time to move on. And I just have to say, I'm definitely excited for the season. I'm, I think yeah. it's going to be. It's not going to be all like it's not going to be rosy. We're not going to win the league. Yeah, we're not, we're like, whatsoever. But yeah. I'm excited for something different, and I definitely think we have a chance to see something different from City this yeah. year. But like what we have to do, you know, for so long the cross was, it was a place that teams were afraid to come to. Maybe mm-hmm. not afraid, but you know, it was a place where they were coming and saying, you know, we'd be happy with a draw here. Yeah. Just, you know, just play, play our own game. You know, it was that kind of place that. You know, it's lost the spark about it now. You know, teams aren't as afraid. You know, you've, <coughs> you know, whatever team is coming to the cross now, and they, yeah, like over know, the, they're over not afraid of to go and attack City because they know that, having watched last season, like mm-hmm. you know, they're not what they have been before, and it's gonna. Over the, well, I think it was the game of two halves on Twitter wrote an article for RT saying about how City's home record under Caulfield for the three seasons prior to last season was the best in the league by an absolute country mile, yeah, even oh, better yeah. than Doc. Oh gee, yeah, definitely. I think last season we won four home games all season. We bowls 2-0, we beat UCD twice, a 1-0 and a 3-2 win, and we beat Dundalk. Yeah. And four wins just wasn't good enough. And I was there for only three of them, so I only thought he win three times last yeah. season. You know, I uh, yeah. didn't go to too many away days, I need to go to more. But our away form, while it wasn't perfect, was nowhere near as symbolic as our home form. So like you said, if we can actually just turn the cross yeah. into more of a fortress, that would be go a long way, you know? Yeah, definitely. If you yeah. gave cities away form with kind of equivalent home farm they probably would have had a fine season they would yeah, you'd be happy with it like yeah but yeah I think in terms of we spoke fairly briefly there about who's come in in terms of what needs to come in definitely we need more bodies at the back yeah I think there will be more to come as Fenn said um, a striking option we brought I didn't mention Connor Davis coming from um, Derry wasn't it and yeah, he's previously Thompson, UCD yeah. good, good striker but you need more oh, we don't need yeah. the 10 we had last season um, yeah well, you, you can't be relying on the Ben Owen is a good option Dara Crowley mm. Uh, Fenn seems keen to play him. Connor, I think even one more striker, one more proven um, season striker would be would go a long way. Yeah, I think um, in terms of that kind of more attacking midfield area with McGlade, with Galvin and O'Connor, I think I'd be happy once you have young lads propping that up. In terms of centre midfield, again, I'd be fairly happy. Maybe one more body, um, defence bodies. And goalkeeper, I'd be happy. I don't know how you'd feel, but yeah, no, I feel the same way. You know, you, you, you can see there is a base there. Like you know, mm-hmm. you you can say it's like Cigar with Morrissey, you, you'd use him as kind of an anchor in the middle of the field, wouldn't you? You yeah. know, if you were saying there's any man that's going to be guaranteed, yeah. the, the team should, you'd you think he, that he needs to keep himself fit this season. He yeah. was out a lot last season, and I think we'll go through our actual starting eleven um, yeah. if we can name a full eleven. Yeah, okay. um, <laughs> going forward. Yeah, um, oh, sorry, in a minute, but. Um, it's a strange position for him too, because last season he would have been amongst a fairly experienced squad, and now he's, besides Bennett and McNulty, who are both coaches, yeah. he's the most experienced player in the squad by a country he, well. Yeah, um, he's playing alongside you know a lot of young players. Like he'd be, yeah. he'd be a great mentor for them. You know, as he an needs to be. He'll be have to step up. It'll exactly, be a big yeah. role for him, and hopefully he's ready to take that on. Because yeah. obviously fitness was a worry for him last season, but. Hopefully, just a good preseason now can get him back fighting because he's a fantastic player. He's a fantastic, we saw that when yeah. the win against Finn Harps away, the oh, goals he's able yeah. to score. He's got that technique and he's got the drive and he's got passion and he loves Cork City. Oh, he just it's he just does, a matter yeah. of keeping him fit and keeping him going. But um, will we go through our first team? Yeah, we can do. Yeah, um, I think there's no question really when you start off like Liam Boston has to be. Yeah, the McNulty's sticks, you know. a fantastic player. Yeah, Cork City obviously. Um, he started the season last season as first choice, and I think when he came when Finn came in initially. 
Um, McNulty was his first choice. Yeah. They played Sligo Rovers, and City were in that game in a close encounter, and McNulty made a mistake, yeah. and a fairly galling mistake, but nonetheless a mistake. Can't really fault him for it. He's been there for so long, he's bound to make a few. And a 4-2 defeat um, that came, and from there he didn't get his place back, as far as I can remember. Yeah, Ty Grine was given the opportunity. Ty Grine was given the opportunity. Um, you know what was keeper. amazing, I thought? Even, you know, before games, all season, you know, we were watching the warm-ups, you know, before the game. Mm -hmm. And every every single week we used to say, Ty Grine's fantastic, you yeah. know. He's, every time we watch him, he's he's on the ball, like, and just, we wish we'd get a chance to see him yeah. in-game uh, so he can prove himself, because he was and trying was so even hard all the time. During the summer when they played Preston North End, he was yeah. meant to have been fantastic. Yeah. And he's clearly a great shot stopper and a fantastic signing for Watford, who respect to Watford will probably need a shot stopper like City this <laughs> yeah. season you know probably yeah. won't be as strong as they were in other Actually seasons similar to ourselves yeah. no disrespect intended um, but yeah Brian was a fantastic keeper and like you said we were watching before games and it's very easy to watch keepers before games and think god like every yeah. keeper should realistically be making those saves but he made yeah. them look very good and when he came in he was just as good he made a bit of a mistake against Bowes which was more down to the the turf, the turf in <laughs> Daily Mount than anything else but man the match performances against um, probably Harps. That was a poor performance. Yeah. Um, but in a draw, he made some good saves. I'm pretty sure against and Dundalk, Dundalk as well, definitely, he was fantastic as well. As well yeah. um, and he was pretty good in the game against UCD as well with some strong saves. UCD, yeah. um, it was 2-1. Two 2-0 two City, UCD got one back. City went again and got a third. UCD, in the last minute, got a second through a penalty and then went up and hit the post. And then, sorry, went up and Ryan made a great save. Whatever it was, he had a fantastic end to the yeah, season. He did, and we yeah. all assumed he'd be the number one this season, yeah, and obviously we hoping, he's not. Yeah. Um, Liam Boston so obviously will be the number one for City this season. Yeah. By all accounts, meant to be very good with the ball at his feet, which will suit to our style. Yeah. Um, I think one of the weaknesses of Ryan's game was his distribution. And I think Boston hopefully can fill that uh, hole. Maybe we're just a bit too picky with our, uh, <laughs> with our Maybe, yeah, choice yeah. of goalkeeper distribution. But in terms of, the, we won't speculate as to signings, but in terms of who um, is at the club now, I suppose right back would be the... Um, Charlie Fleming, he played there against UCC. Yeah. And he, he, he did a he great job, in fairness. Yeah, he, he looked very looked solid. Probably slightly nervous because it was his first game for City. And yeah. he, at times, maybe trying a little bit too hard to make things come off, but looked solid. Yeah. Um, quick, very, yeah. very physically good. That, that's a huge asset. I think, even like, you know, like obviously, it's a. Uh, you know, I, I think a, a wing back or full back obviously with pace is a huge thing. Oh, yeah. Even like you look at Dundalk there, like Sean Gannon has been yeah. has been key to them for so many seasons. Like you know, and they they work their attack down that wing, and he mm -hmm. plays ball into Pat Hope and then or whoever's there. And you know, it's just it's a, it's a great outlet. Like you know, if if you're not using your wingers, you know, like McGlade or mm -hmm. Galvin or Darrow. Because kind of. both all of our wingers seem to be the type that will cut in. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. if you cut in and left back goes, there'll be a lot of option a lot of space down the side so that's a huge opportunity and it's something that City didn't really exploit last season and it's something that like against Waterford would have been great if you cut in with O'Connor slide a fella across and you can play a low hard ball yeah. there's no defender in the league who's going to like a ball coming across his own goal and trying to clear it exactly any yeah. little bit of a touch and it might end up in the back of the net and on the other side as well you've got Ronan Hurley who's yeah. a fantastic left back he's very good yeah. um, a great delivery he had a few not poor games but tough games last season but that's to come. It was his first full season with the club after captain in the 19s, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Great delivery from free kick as well in corners, which is another option to have. So I think in the fullback areas, I'm happy with them as starting fullbacks. While yeah. I would like substitute options, Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, that, uh, they're good options. Where we do lack, I think, is centre half. Definitely centre half. Like, yeah, um, as we said a couple of times, you know, how important last year, you know, you had Casey mm -hmm. in from Bowes and, you know, he was fantastic. You know, once he settled down, he was solid. He had a Casey poor game in the President's Cup, but from then he, he was did, yeah. solid. He scored mm -hmm. a fantastic goal against Bowes. That was unbelievable, yeah. Yeah, a great free kick. You had Conor McCarthy, our player of the season. Yeah. Uh, Sean McLaughlin as well, those three. And they did yeah. form a very strong <laughs> three at points of the season too. And Bennett, Alan Bennett, obviously, hit his testimony last season. Many people thought he'd retire, and he, he hasn't. He's signed on for another season, and yeah. he's a fantastic player. But um, I suppose the only options you'd really put in would be Alan Bennett and um, Rob Slevin as the two yeah, centre-halves. To be fair, yeah. Not, nothing against the lads, but there's, there's no other centre-halves there. You've got Josh yeah. Hannan, you've got lads coming through, but while I'm all for giving young lads a go... It's an awful lot of pressure to put on especially Josh Hannan's shoulders half. as centre-half. Yeah. Like, you know, the, like the anchor of the team, the man kind of keeping things together, organising the defence, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it is a lot of pressure, especially when you're coming up against top strikers in the league, you know, yeah. you're always under Absolutely, under it's pressure. different when you're the striker and you're trying to capitalise on the defender's mistake, whereas if yeah. you're the defender who makes that mistake, it can be galling. Yeah, exactly. So, I'd be happy to have Slevin plus 
another player, or I also gladly take as many as many signings as we can get. Yeah, oh, realistically, yeah. another centre half would probably do. With um, and there's other young lads coming through. They don't names aren't jumping to my mind, but there's good lads. Not not just in the 19s. Obviously, these lads won't be coming in straight away. But yeah. there's lads in the other 17s having great seasons uh, at centre half. So there should be options coming through. Touch wood. Hopefully, we'll see a few more signings in defence. Um, but for now. I think Slevin and Bennett are the options. Definitely, um, yeah. Hanahan on the bench and amongst others. Um, moving on into the midfield, I suppose we'd have to look at what system we'd be playing. Yeah. I'd probably lean towards the 4 2 3 1 <laughs> option. Um, yeah. So I think in the midfield, for me, I don't know if you disagree, yeah. uh, feel free to. I'd probably go with um, Morrissey and Byrne, Coleman on the bench, but if you think the other, if you yeah. think opposite. No, I think the same. Like, you know, going by any of Byrne's performances this mm -hmm. year, like, he's been he's been excellent. You I know, think he deserves to keep his spot um, yeah. for Coleman to win it often. Yeah, oh, without a doubt. Like, and, you know, any time, you know, for a young fella, he's very cool, like, and he's mm -hmm. calm any time he gets the ball. There's no panic, like, you know, there's, there's that's way more experience than him that get the ball and mm -hmm. panic with and don't know where to turn. Yep. But he's solid. Buckley, you know, yeah, multiple times last yeah, season oh. against Watford, especially losing out the ball. And Byrne seemed very... Um, very good and careful without being cautious. You know, he was yeah. happy to play that ball that took a risk and often it came off. And if it didn't, he was happy to win it back. That's not to say that there won't be plenty of options for, or opportunities for Keane Coleman too, um, if Morrissey's fitness isn't, doesn't come up to standard. But um, yeah, no, as, 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 as it goes, I think the burn and Morrissey behind the three strikers, I think, picks itself. Yeah, you know, definitely, yeah. Where you put them is one thing, but I don't know. Um, I suppose Galvin on the left, McGlade on the right, and O'Connor through the middle. Yeah, um, we'd be delighted with that. Um, well, like you said, you know, if O'Connor was, you know, at UCD, if he was playing down the centre, you know, yeah. he was such a threat down the centre. It's certainly worth giving him a go, you know. Because even keeping him in the centre means he could be running off a striker and scoring goals. Exactly. Know? Yeah, and like that was that was a strong Gets point. Him close you know, to goal. From, yeah. Yeah, and um, obviously then looking at signings, the midfield, those trade midfield look fine with lads coming through. You have got Dale Holland who played in the preseason, look good. But I think we probably could do it another option to help out with that uh, attacking three. Din, Din, uh, Dindanga in midfield, um, yeah. or sorry, in the wing, looked good against UCC. We've got the option of Dara Crowley, who could probably play out wide. I think he played out wide last season, uh, amongst others. But probably one more senior option to cover McGlade, uh, Galvin and O'Connor. And then the only option in front so far is either O'Brien with Marsh or, or, Connor, or, Davis. or Connor Davis. Yeah. I haven't seen anything of Connor Davis. He... From what I've read, he seems a more physically imposing striker than Whitmarsh. O'Brien Whitmarsh, sorry. Um, it's a hard one to pick. Um, I don't yeah. know who you'd go with. No, I, I think, to be fair, no, you know, Conor Davis' experience in the league, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's hard to look past him, you know. Hopefully we see him in the preseason game is now coming up and, you know, yeah. get a proper a proper uh, idea of what he's like. But I think it's hard to go wrong with him, you know. Definitely. If, if it came to the, the option today that City would be playing two strikers, oh, you course, know, yeah. like, you know, to have O'Brien Whitmarsh's pace, yeah, and yeah. have you know Connor Davis a good solid centre forward you know or even if you have um, Connor Davis starting a game with O'Connor McGlade and Galvin run legs off the yeah. defence O'Brien's with Marsh's pace could come on and be absolutely lethal and even not that we don't want to make him sound overly one dimensional but that <laughs> pace was rapid if he could yeah, he could yeah. easily come on onto one of the wings as well he looks Definitely, like a very yeah. good player and look maybe we're making the City squad appear like it's a lot better than it is we're fairly um, positive people in yeah, terms we of are optimistic, City. optimistic we have to be, is the word yeah. but I don't think it's as bad as people are saying. I think I trust in Neil Fenn absolutely. Same, 100%. Yeah. And I think more signs will come in. And I think if we went into the season with the squad as it is now, it would be fairly bare bones before I get through it. I think City were quite lucky last season that UCD were there. Because UCD, yeah. in the way that they are, naturally tend to fall away for a second half of the season. Not tend to, but are liable to. And Harps were worse than us, rather than us being better than them. <laughs> yeah. Um, this season we won't have that luxury. Shelburne will be very good coming up. They're definitely better than UCD. Yeah. They'll be hungry. They have, they've gathered momentum. Like, yeah. you know, they'll want to stay. You know, once they're up here now, Obviously, they don't want to go We have them like, in the first game of the season. That'll be a yeah. big game. And yeah, and then you look at Harps. Harps have made some good signings. It's hard to know where that'll go, what will happen. But you don't want to be trying to think which teams will be worse than us and trying to be thinking yeah. which teams will be better than I think Waterford are probably likely to have a fairly tough season as well probably similarly tough to ourselves but yeah look besides that fairly optimistic yeah but also yeah you have to kind of hope for the best you know like you say mm -hmm. you look for the positives in it you know even in a time when we mightn't have the opportunities that we have or have the you know 
the financial yeah the, you know it's not going to be the finances aren't there but that's because yeah. we're not in Europe that's the nature of it and the best thing is just getting back there as soon as we can exactly and like when Fenn looks to the you know the young talent hopefully that you know over the next season or two they'll fall into place you know they'll they'll bring the team together and once we can get back to Europe is the most important part you know oh, yeah. obviously it's the pinnacle of it you know 100%. that's what we aim for every year obviously, and there's that new European competition coming through so it actually won't be the Europa League it's kind of all up in the air as to what yeah. will happen um, we'll probably cover that at some point in the season but um, I think it's first place gets Champions League and second, third and fourth get into this um, second competition below the Europa League which will have it's, it's I'm not going to comment on it because I'm not too aware of it but yeah. it's definitely strange um, hopefully the prize money doesn't go in because that's the main thing really. yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> that's what uh, the main thing going, keep, yeah. it's, 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 that's because the nature of the way the league is um, I'm not going to go into it because I'd be here all day yeah but I know what you mean but like you know you have to you know, the, the fact the, the club can win can come second first second in the league and then after one season falling away can be in financial trouble yeah. well you could argue there's other factors to that of course there should be a structure in place that means that doesn't happen yeah. we've seen other clubs in Munster go to the wall as well as City and mm. even recently and we uh, it's terrible to see it happen yeah and but like you know it we'll is, be here all day with it we, we won't like you know it is very finely balanced and you know I yeah. remember you know you see, like you said, going out to Europe can have a huge effect, and especially for bringing in players too. Like I spoke to Kieran Sadler there last year, I know he was saying how it's a great opportunity for someone yep. to come over. I know to play in a le- in a League of Ireland team, especially when you've Europe. Yep. Europe is a huge attraction. You know, even look at the Premier League or big teams like that. You know, mm-hmm. European football is a massive bonus for anyone. Yep. And you know, to think that you could come to a League of Ireland team like Cork City, play European qualifiers, and you know, it's just a fantastic opportunity for them. Yeah, I remember speaking to Alan Bennett, and he was talking about how there was a. Um I suppose plane. What was it? The magic plane that as soon as you went over to England, you got into England. <laughs> and yeah. that option hopefully will come uh, separately when there's opportunities to impress in Europe. Yeah. But look, we've probably talked enough now. I think um, we have. Yeah, I'd say that's but we've covered uh, nearly. Just in terms of predictions this season, it's fairly up in the air again. I'm not yeah. too sure where City will come, but I think anywhere below fourth is up for grabs, including fourth. Yeah, I still feel that. I, I, I do think that we won't go down. No, I don't think I, we won't. I'm, I'm positive we will. We I will hold on. We'll like, go down. I think yeah. City. I think there's enough biting in the season that they'll fight out results. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I I'll tentatively say I'd be happy with sixth. Would it all d- I, definitely? Yeah. I should have thought this beforehand, but I think we could. Easily, I can conceivably see us finishing as high as fourth, but, but I like, will say yeah. sixth. I think sixth place. But like like you say there, you know, we were speaking about in the likes of Derry and Bowles and stuff. Their team is that you know we can play like if we get. Points we, off. We, if we, we get we points took off, four them, points off balls at the cross last season in a terrible season at the cross. I think we took a point off them away from home as well. Yeah, we, we won away from home. Conor McCarthy actually scored well, we away from beat home. Away from home didn't we? Yeah, but you know, yeah. but like you say, you know, they're they're very fine games. Like you know, mm-hmm. a win against either one of them, you know, yeah. it's it's up in the air. Like Pats, like realistically, we should be challenging Pats. Like, yeah, teams every like day. Pats, Sligo Rovers, yeah. Waterford, they were all above us last season. Yeah. Um, and like we played poor against Waterford at home. Yeah, we, like, we like should have beat the first them. game. Like Marky Sullivan scored a winner. Yeah, you know, Marky Sullivan RRC, scored a like, winner. That was fantastic. But, uh, and cities have always been good away from home form, and hopefully we can do away from home, and hopefully we can do that again. But um, yeah, no, I take a strong mid-table finish this season. Yeah. Uh, trip to the Tumnox Caramel Wafer Cup and uh, <laughs> and a decent cup run in yeah. either the A Sports Cup or the FA Cup. Yeah. I take either. Yeah, like like you said, we can only expect so much. Like you yeah. know, our expectations wouldn't be as high as they might have been one time. But uh, we're certainly happy to take mid-table finish. A cup run would be nice because a cup cup final day out obviously nothing compares to it. Yeah, but. but um, uh, We'll take what we get this season as long as I don't think we'll go down. But yeah. I think that's all from us for now. I think, yeah, I we'll, think we'll definitely catch up with. Uh, we'll be back on Fan TV before the season, covering friendlies yeah. or covering something. But um, no, it was. Um, thanks again to Soho for having us. It was good to chat. If you yeah, made this, if you made this friend of video, then uh, yeah. I salute you. But um, yeah, yeah, it's goodbye yeah. for me anyway. Goodbye for me. Yeah, goodbye and th- thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you. You'll see plenty of us down the cross over over the the coming months and hopefully on the road as well around yeah. Dublin and Derry and keep all an eye on Fan TV for any. Uh, uh, news coming out of Cork City and hopefully have a few interviews with uh, current and former players over the next few months and um, if you want to contact us I'm at John Keane McGrath on Twitter and, and I'm at Jack McGuire 188 perfect thanks